Thanks to CuriosityStream for supporting my channel. Which face do you think is more trustworthy? This one or this one? According to this paper, most people think it's this one, but all isn't quite as it might seem. Let's dive in. Hey y'all and welcome back to Journal Club, the series on my channel where we go through interesting papers in machine learning, artificial intelligence, and emerging technologies, and talk about both the ways that they might be particularly interesting or impactful, as well as the ways that we should be a little bit skeptical of their results. If you're new here, I'm Jordan and I'm a PhD student at MIT who makes content around machine learning, AI, emerging tech, grad life, so if that is up your alley, subscribe down below. And if there are any other papers that you'd love to see me do on this channel, you can also definitely leave them down in the comments. But without further ado, the paper that we're looking at today is titled, AI synthesized faces are indistinguishable from real faces and more trustworthy. And this was a paper that I found on Twitter. And this paper came up onto my feed largely because of this tweet. And it was, interesting to see the tweet because it essentially highlights one of the main figures of this paper which claims that the top row images were deemed most trustworthy by participants in the study and the bottom row were deemed least trustworthy and you can kind of see how people might have found that to be problematic. I certainly did. However, this paper actually makes conclusions that I think you wouldn't necessarily expect based on that figure. And so I thought it would be interesting to go through and talk about what they actually did here and why I find this paper both interesting and also kind of odd. So to start off, this paper focuses on three experiments. In every case, they essentially generate 800 images to show people. So there are 400 synthetic images and then 400 real images. The images are equally divided in terms of demographics. So 200 men, 200 women in each group of 400 and then divided equally amongst Black, Caucasian, East Asian, and South Asian races. And they also only included images that had like uniform backgrounds, didn't have obvious rendering artifacts. So images that you might have a harder time telling were synthetic. In terms of the real faces, they then basically took the 400 images that they synthesized and matched them to faces that looked like the synthesized images but were real human faces, so that in theory there was kind of a one-to-one -one comparison that you could make between how likely someone was to recognize a synthesized fake image of a person versus a real image of a person. So with this data set of 800 images, the authors went on to do three experiments. In all of the experiments, they recruited participants from Mechanical Turk. So in the first experiment, each person was shown 100 128 images from that 800 image data set and were asked to determine whether or not the image was real or fake. And in this one they were given no feedback, so you didn't find out afterwards whether or not you were correct. In the second experiment they showed a different group of people 128 images from that same data set and did a similar thing where they were also asked to say whether the image that they were looking at was real or fake, but in that case they actually got feedback on whether or not they were correct with every image. And then the third experiment, everyone was shown 128 images from that 800 image data set and were asked how much they trust the person in each one. And so we'll get into the results in a second, but actually one of my initial questions when I was reading this paper was essentially how they sampled the 128 images for each person, whether it was the same 128 images, whether they made sure that the distribution of the 128 images was uniform, so you still had that even split of 50-50 synthetic real. They don't say that anywhere in the paper, so meh. <laughs> what they did find was that if you look at experiment one and experiment two, so no feedback and feedback, essentially people are more likely to correctly identify an image as real or fake if they are given feedback after they identify an image. And this makes sense if you're given feedback on whether or not an image is real when you thought it was fake then you might learn what things to look for in an image that can help you better determine whether an image is real or fake. But the interesting part of this paper is really in the trustworthiness section and that's where they found that the average trustworthiness rating for synthetic media, so generated images, was about 7.7% higher than for real faces. And that brings us to this figure which this clearly looks like there's some sort of racial, potentially gendered split where a white person or a light-skinned person who is female is more trustworthy and a man or someone who presents as male or someone who has darker skin is less trustworthy. 
and obviously from like a bias perspective from you know a human bias perspective because this isn't even an algorithm determining trustworthiness that we're talking about we're talking about people that would obviously have concerning although not necessarily particularly surprising <laughs> implications however if you jump through their results section they actually explicitly say that although a small effect, black faces were rated more trustworthy than South Asian faces, but otherwise there was no effect across race. On the other hand, they do say that women were rated as significantly more trustworthy than men. So it's less surprising and I think makes more sense in the context of their results that the top row, which is most trustworthy faces, were all women. I think it makes less sense and would be interesting to see the full kind of ranking of all of the photos to see the bottom one because that's definitely it feels like it should be indicative of something based on how they're presenting this data and from their results it shouldn't be now since this is a paper that's looking at human biases there's human mechanical turk workers who are essentially filling out this survey the other thing that i was really curious about was what the demographics of Mechanical Turk participants are in the first place because obviously there are cultural aspects to whether or not we think particular facial expressions, particular people from different backgrounds happen to be trustworthy and that can differ across cultures. So I did a little digging and essentially found where people are coming from. In the US it tends to actually be predominantly women working and then in India it tends to be predominantly men. And so they don't break down their results by demographic by where people came from, whether or not uh, the user filling out the survey was male or female. And I think it would be really, really interesting to see that data and see how it differs when it comes to trustworthiness, especially since when we think about algorithms like this, or when we think about, you know, synthetic media, it's not like the only place that they're going to be used is the US, since things tend to be pretty Western centric. Uh, and I think it's important to kind of look at how these systems and how synthetic media uh, might be engaged with in other cultures. In short, this was a really fun paper to dive into. It was definitely a paper that I just have more questions about having finished reading it. I have so many more things that I'd like to know, so many other experiments that I'd like to see. They actually did put some of their data up on um, OSF and open source data website if you want to check that out. Uh, they also have both of their data sets up on GitHub, so if anyone wants to dig in and see if they can pull out some of the questions that I had or answer any questions that you might have, definitely do so. And if you do, leave it down in the comments because I'd love to see your results. And if you want to see me do deep dives on other papers, especially if you're interested in really nerding out into the details like I tend to be, then you should go on over to Nebula and check out my Nebula Plus videos. If you haven't heard, Nebula is a streaming platform built by me and some of my friends, including people like Tiersu, Simon Clark, and Marquez Brownlee. On Nebula, you can find ad-free versions of all of our videos, plus bonus content in our Nebula Plus videos for anyone who's like me and likes to go through the supplementary information in journal papers. You'd also get access to our Nebula Originals, which you can't find anywhere else, including a very good trivia show where I competed against Brian from Real Engineering and Dave from City Beautiful, and a bunch of fun and bizarre challenges, including trying to build an IKEA chair while answering math problems. And the best way to sign up for Nebula is actually through CuriosityStream, who are kindly sponsoring today's video, and who are offering an amazing Mother's Day discount of less than $12 a year through May 10th. CuriosityStream is a subscription streaming service with thousands of documentaries and nonfiction videos. In fact, they recently put their documentary Behind the Spotlight, which delves into how Mr. Beast became Mr. Beast on YouTube. So if you want to get a sneak peek on the kinds of content that you can get on CuriosityStream, I will include it in the end cards over here. CuriosityStream loves independent creators and wants to help us grow our platform. So if you click on the link in the description or use my promo code Jordan, you can get access to CuriosityStream for 42% off their annual plans through May 10th, with Nebula included for free for as long as you are a CuriosityStream member. That's less than $12 a year. Signing up for CuriosityStream and Nebula is a great way to directly support my channel while getting to watch my videos ad-free and getting access to my Nebula Plus content. So sign up for CuriosityStream and Nebula at CuriosityStream.com slash Jordan or using the promo code Jordan. Again, you can check out the Mr. Beast documentary up here. You can follow me on my various socials down here and otherwise I'll see y'all in the next one.